Hi everyone, today also let's do a past paper question from the area NPV in your A-level accounting paper. Today we are going to discuss 2017 paper 2, question number 6, part A. So this particular question also, if you count for 400 marks, this particular question will count for like 10 marks. So let's read the question. Before that, we'll go through the requirement. The requirement is cash inflows, cash outflows, net present value of the project. And they are asking us to use the below format. And they are asking the recommendation whether to proceed with the investment or not. So let's read the scenario. A company is considering to acquire a new machine which would cost 1.2 million. The expected useful life of the machine is 5 years and residual value is estimated as 200,000. So first what you have to understand, this is a cash outflow for the year 0 because we have to purchase the asset. If we are purchasing the asset, we have to pay money. Pay money means your cash is going out. And we are planning to use the asset for 5 years. After 5 years, I can sell it for a residual value, scrap value, if not salvage value. I can sell the asset for how much? 200,000. Then what you have to understand is 200,000 is a cash inflow for the year number 5. Because we will use the asset for 5 years. After using it for the 5 years, end of 5th year what we will do? We will sell the asset. If we sell the asset, we will get money. We will get money. So it's a cash inflow for the year number five. So here see outflow. I wrote it inside the brackets. Then I will be able to do the question very easily. This machine will be used to manufacture a product and its expected annual production is as follows. So they have given using the machine. We are planning to produce this number of units. For the first year 500 units, second year 500, third year 500, fourth year 600 and fifth year 600. The expected selling price per unit is 2000. So we are planning to sell each unit at a price of 2000. The expected prime cost per unit is 1000. So what is the prime cost? Prime cost is the addition of your all the direct cost. Like the direct material cost, direct labor cost, direct other expenses. So addition of all these direct cost only we will call it as prime cost. So that part is there in manufacturing accounting. Somehow in this question what you have to understand for you to produce one unit you are incurring a cost of thousand dollars. Simple as that. Annual production OH including the depreciation. What they are telling production OH including the depreciation would amount to 300,000. So don't forget this 300,000 includes the depreciation. So ideally for the NPV calculation you know you can't take any non-cash item. So depreciation is something non-cash. We have to take only the cash items. Then remember from this 300,000 I'll cut it. From here and I'll write it as 300,000. From this 300,000, for the NPV calculation, we have to remove, remove the depreciation and only we have to do the calculation. Huh? Don't forget, we have to remove the depreciation from 300,000. So that particular cost only should be taken into consideration. And what they are telling the required rate of return is 10%. Cash inflows, outflows statement and we have to calculate the NPV. So we will do it here. <coughs> this is the question number 6 part A of that I am doing the first one. So here I will write the years. This particular question is there for 5 years. Year 0, year 1 year 2, year 3, year 4 and year 5 and let me do the calculation in rupees thousands. So let me write the cash inflows first. 
cash inflows then I'll keep maybe like four lines or five lines and I'll write the cash outflows cash outflows now let's take one by one here let's take this one machine cost 1.2 million so 1.2 million means here we have to write 1200 here you have to write 1200 here 1.2 million I'm doing the calculation in thousands so purchase cost purchase cost of the asset today I have to spend it here 0,200 negative so we are done with this and next one scrap value after five years by selling the asset I can get 200,000 so here I'll write it as scrap scrap value it's an inflow 200 it's an inflow 200 so we are done with that as well and next we have to get the sales income sales income sales unless told otherwise you can assume whatever the number of that we are producing we will be selling it whatever the units that we are producing will be selling so in the first year we are planning to produce 500 units so 500 units each unit 2000 500 into 2000 I am getting 1 million but I am not writing 1 million because we are doing it in 1000 so I will write it as 1000 let's see for the second year also 500 units third year also 500 units so 500 into 2000 1 million so here also 1 million here also 1 million and fourth year 600 fifth year 600 so that means it should be 1.2 million 1200 1200 then what you have to understand so we are done with this one as well then next if you want to sell you have to produce no? here they have given to produce each unit we will incur a cost of 1000 rupees so 1000 into 500 it is 500,000 then here I will write prime cost 500 and here also 1000 into 500 third year also 1000 into 500 then here 500 here also 500 then 1000 into 600 1000 into 600 then here 600 and here 600 done so next what you have so we are done with this one also we have to take the production OHs so you can't take 300,000 as your production OH production OH we can't take 300,000 because what you have to understand inside this 300,000 depreciation is included inside this 300,000 depreciation is included so here what we have to do we have to find out if the depreciation is not there what is your production oil if not cash production oil so we have to remove the depreciation in order to remove the depreciation I have to find the depreciation so the cost of the asset is 1200 from that we have to deduct the scrap value scrap value is 200,000 and estimated useful life is 5 years then each year depreciation how much are you getting 200,000 each year depreciation is 200,000 then what you have to understand inside this 200,000 inside this 300,000 200,000 is there which is depreciation then cash 
depreciation is non cash then cash wise how much is the production overhead that you have only 100000 cash wise the production overhead that you have only 100000 so inside this 300000 that 200000 also there which is something we shouldn't take non cash items depreciation we shouldn't take so i removed it once i remove that 200000 what's the cash production overhead cash wise i will incur only 100000 then here each year its annual cost here see they have given annual production overhead each year 100 100 100 100 100 100 good so i think we are done with all the required adjustments so let's take the total inflows total cash inflows here nothing thousand 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 two hundred and thousand four hundred and let's take the total cash outflows total cash outflows here thousand two hundred six hundred 600 600 700 and 700 and next so let's look at the format we have to get the net cash flow net cash flow so from the inflows you have to deduct your outflows then you will get the net cash flow here 1200 here plus 400 here plus 400 here also plus 400 here plus 500 here plus 700 good now we have to take the discounting factors at 10 percent they have given discounting factors 10 percent so here it is 1 0 0.91 0 0.83 0 0.75 0 0.68 0 0.62 let me confirm my numbers 9183.75 9183756862 good so now we have to take the present values let's take the present values if you multiply your net cash flows from the discounting factors you will get the present values present values so here it is 1200 400 into 0.91 364 here 400 into 0.83 332 here 300 here 500 into 0.68 340 and here 700 into 0.62434 434 four. now let's get the npv npv so minus 1200 plus 364 this is minus don't forget plus 364 plus 332 plus 300 plus 340 plus 434 I am getting a value of plus 570 that means plus 570 means NPV is rupees 570,000 positive 
so that's the first part second part what they are asking for us to write the recommendation recommendation so you know if the npv is positive you have to accept if the npv is negative you have to reject so here you can write the recommendation since the npv is positive positive it is recommended it is recommended to proceed with the investment it is recommended to proceed with the investment so for 400 mark paper 10 mark question very simple if you know the concepts and the ways of doing the calculation properly getting this 10 mark is not a big deal so this is not the only npv question that i have done i have done other past paper npv questions here you will get the playlist you can click and watch that particular video as well if not the set of videos as well